October 14th City Council is all over. We do please stand to the Pledge of Allegiance and vote for sign. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a small alteration in the agenda, and so I will entertain a motion to amend the agenda for an executive session. That the City Council amend the agenda of this October 14th, 2019 to include the following item. Consider motion to recess into executive session in accordance with PSA 75-4319B2 regarding consultation with legal counsel for matters that would be deemed public for the client privilege occurring regarding the Village South Edwardsville project. Second. It has been moved and second to amend the agenda. Would the clerk please call a roll? Schreiber? Yes. Stites? Yes. Adams? Yes. K.R.? Yes. Malak? Yes. Thank you. The first item on the agenda will be approval of the minutes from the September the 23rd meeting. <coughs> May I make a motion to accept the agenda or the minutes as written from September 23rd? Second. Okay. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes on September the 23rd. Would the clerk please call roll? Excuse me. Schreiber? Yes. Stein? Yes. Adams? Yes. Kahar? Yes. Hello. Yes. The okay, next item on the agenda will be approval of the statement of the bill, pay, bill paid in the amount of $309,961.81. I make a motion to accept the statement of bills in the amount of $309,961.81. Second. It has been moved and second to approve the statement of bills paid. Would the clerk please call it? Driver? Yes. Stites? Yes. Adams? Yes. K.R.? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Next item on the agenda will be request for uh, comments from the public. And if you would have comments, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Mayor, I, I might just add, I know we're going to, and I don't know what people are here for tonight, but if if it's related to the uh, parks presentation, I might suggest that we do the presentation and then subsequent to that, allow people to make comments if they're here for some other reason. They wish, they wish to do that now. Just, I, I think maybe it will help. In okay, the so you want you want to withhold comments related, related to that until yeah, after right. the presentation? Yes, sir. Okay, I does think, everybody think understand best. that? We will not do that I don't now. know if there's other people who have, have a comment, you're welcome to make them. Thank you. Yeah, if you have comments on another topic, yes. <laughs> well, uh, state your name and your address. Uh, Dylan Woods, my address is 2309 Anderson Road, Lawrence, Kansas, but I'm the executive director of Bond Trent Community Services out in Bonner Springs. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about the Christmas Basket Program. Um, so Bond Trent itself has been around for 30 years, but the Christmas Basket Program has been going on since 1968. Um, so we're calling, or coming here to in hopes of just promoting the program. Uh, Debbie has Fraser. a few things, too. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Debbie Grosser. It's Debbie Gallagher Grosser. Hear it? You remember? And I live at um, 635 Lakewood Road, Bonner Springs, Kansas, 66012. I spoke to your city manager, Michael Webb, and we're kind of working on something um, <coughs> that uh, for the storage area, maybe. But anyway, we just wanted to First of all, thank everyone for being involved and being such a support to the Montreal Christmas Baskets. Um, we will start just this, this year, this is kind of a refresher. This year, the collections uh, will be brought to the First Christian Church in Bonner Springs, as they have in the past, to the basement on December the 9th. It's a Monday. We start about 8 o'clock in the morning and work until about noon. And that's when we have students from the, the area come in. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, the fourth graders from both Bonner and Edwards will take turns and come and work. And put, they distribute the food that's brought in from the schools or wherever. And they sort it and put it in the, bag, in the boxes. And then on Thursday, this will be the 12th, uh, from about 9 o'clock to probably about 1.30, 
they will be we will distribute those to the clients, those who are less who are less fortunate than, than others. And then we also have we are using the transit from the Parks and Rec this year to deliver the baskets to all of the high rises and passes in the Tivoli Transit where we're using Parks and Rec. So they will be bringing to the to the high rise here also. We do that every year, and then to the uh, two in Bar. So anyway, and uh, Eric's wife is also she's on the volunteer board. And we thank and thank you for all that. But I'm volunteering. I'm volunteering to be the chair this year, and my mother's been in for 50 years. <laughs> She's 90. <laughs> so I said, maybe you might want to let somebody else take over for a while. But anyway, thank you so much for all of your support. And, uh, I think that's all that we, we um, have the answer. We, um, we've also uh, presented um, the, the City of Bottom Springs. We're going to send here out right after this. That's why we're, we're going to their meeting right after this. Um, but we're trying to attempt to promote the uh, program through the website, and so we've made a, a sample uh, banner that could go on the website, um, also for USD to afford they're going to get it to. So I'll just yeah, forward that to yeah. Zach, and that'd be fun. Thank, Thank you, so you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Okay. I think I have our, I think I have a solution for it. Oh, God. Bless you. I'll see you in the morning. Hello, good evening. My name is David Strike. I live at 1396 South 104th Street. And these are my boys, Andrew and Michael. I, they live at the same address. Actually, they live there, and I clean up after them. That's, that's my job. Right. I, I, Mr. Adams asked me to come and report out on the cleanup of the cemetery. And uh, uh, I, also, I wanted to thank uh, the city, Mr. Daniel specifically, and the uh, St. Martin in the Field Episcopal Church for their for their uh, uh, help as well. But uh, we we couldn't have done it without with, without those two groups working together, helping me clean out the trail and whatnot. Um, so Saturday morning we had about 30 people from what I counted show up, and and it was great. It was awesome. We we wrapped it up in about two and a half hours. I planned for three, so it was, I guess it was pretty good uh, uh, planning on my part. But, um, I, I did want to tell you though, a lot of adults and kids were really touched by, by that experience. Um, it, it was neat to see how many people were moved by, by doing that. And I think one of the important lessons that I think the kids learned was doing something, doing work with a sense of purpose, right? As, as opposed to maybe doing something for a paycheck or doing something to check a box off of a, uh, a chore list. You know, it was doing something with the purpose of remembrance and honor, and uh, I think they, they really got a lot out of that, and the parents felt the same way. It was, it was an excellent project, and I thank you guys so much for letting us do that. Um, obviously, there's more work to be done, and, and I just, I, I wanted to point out, I know that this council here has always come across to me as the people that get things done. You know, that we've, there, there have been a lot of projects in the city that we've talked about and talked about and talked about for the, for the 20 years that I've lived here. But, you know, I see you guys again and again actually do something, get something done. So I just want to encourage you, let's get something done with that cemetery. I want you guys to be the ones to get that done. So, uh, again, thanks for, thanks for the help and, and, uh, and, and the kids are appreciative too. Thank you. Thank you and your, your group for the volunteers to do that. Job. Yes, Thank you. absolutely. <clears throat> Okay, if there are no others, we will move on to the next item on the agenda. As you the presentation regarding potential projects affecting available city parks and public spaces. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, really, this presentation is going to be kind of broader than maybe the original discussion, which, as you know, kind of the original discussion was about Project Green and how that played into our, our parks discussion. But as you know, we've had other things going on around the parks world, the park master plan work that's been going on, some of the discussions we've been talking about, the town center redevelopment. And what's interesting, even though those are kind of separate pieces, many of those coming together, uh, 
and the things are being said about you know town center redevelopment. How do we connect people to a place? It's the same thing that the parks is talking about. The same thing we're talking about with the project green. So it's going to be a little bit broader. I want to thank Zach. He, he did a great job of getting all this stuff put together and we're going to go through. So. You know, as you know, we, we currently have a city park that's about 20 acres. Uh, in reality, it's about 15 usable acres. Uh, as you'll see, some of that is not in the park as far as ownership, and a lot of it's in creeks uh, that are on both sides of the park. Uh, we primarily use it for the soccer and baseball field. That's what's been out there. Uh, traditionally, we added the futsal court, the disc golf court. Those were kind of new things. Uh, we've had a shelter house out there for a long time, uh, and as you know, it's, uh, it, you know it's showing its age, and, and one of the things we had planned was to regrow it, uh, but with all these discussions, we kind of stopped. And then the playground, which actually the playground, many pieces of that have been upgraded in the past few years. Uh, we put more bedding down under it, safety full things. The other park, and we, we don't think about it too much, is the boat ramp park. Uh, that really got started probably uh, a little before I got here, maybe 04 or 05, when they put the boat ramp in and we built a parking lot and that was kind of all there was. When we expanded the trail system though, we got with the property owner, which was the former developer, uh, and he deeded all the rest of that land to us. So instead of just getting a trail easement, he deeded all of that parcel to that to us. So, we really have that entire area that kind of falls behind the River Hall subdivision to the river. So it gives us uh, opportunity on those 13 acres. <clears throat> and then, of course, a number of years ago, uh, we started uh, the Phyllis Freeman Trail. As most of us all know, Phyllis is a longtime employee here. Actually, two times. Uh, she worked for us. Uh, she had cancer. She came back from that worked here for another 20 years and unfortunately the cancer struck her again. Hence the reason we have the pink ribbon and I think it's quite appropriate that it's the you know, breast cancer awareness and cancer awareness one. And so that trail was originally designed to basically go from City Hall to the park and we've got most of that trail done. Uh, so that is there. Uh, and we see a lot of people using it so we know it's a, a valuable asset. So again, uh, we know we have a current park and uh, people go down there, but again, we lose about an acre and a half to the railroad. Uh, I don't think most, you know, a lot of people go down there, you wouldn't notice it, but that's not our property, it's railroad property, uh, which if the railroad uh, decided uh, not to allow us to use it, we effectively would use, lose one soccer field and one baseball field uh, right off the bat. Uh, We've looked at this park a number of times, and the challenge is you can add more ball fields and you lose soccer fields, you add soccer fields and you lose ball fields, because we simply don't have a lot of growth because it's kind of a triangular piece. So we're limited to what we have there. Uh, we know we have two creeks through there. We know that ground can be very wet, uh, especially when you have wet seasons like we've had. Most of those buildings down there are probably well in excess of 25 years. Any gross, you know, the bathrooms don't meet the standards. Uh, any number, any number of things down there. I think our parks and rec person, I should, I don't say people, but pretty much one person with my and a great group of volunteers does a great job <coughs> utilizing this park to its fullest. Uh, but what could be is really what we want to talk about. So, really, what happened, and I, I'm thankful I see Greg Kendall here tonight with, with EDC. So this discussion about Project Green originally started probably over a year ago. They were like, you know, we need to expand. We, we have uh, what they call pups or the trucks that they bring in and bring out that don't necessarily always hit the dock. We need a place. Uh, we'd love it if we had 50 acres, 60 acres is kind of their, their ideal site. Uh, and we really didn't have that. And so they started saying, well, you know, we love being here. You guys have been great to work with. Uh, I heard the word, you know, they said some places they go feel toxic. And they really enjoyed being here. But it was like, but we're limited and what do we, what do, we do? And so 
quite honestly, we just said, well, what if? What if we could figure out some type of system where we have a park exchange? So the current park we have is adjacent to your property. It can meet your needs. But in exchange, we have to have something to replace it, and not just to replace it. It has to be better than what we have. So just the discussion of selling the park or just saying, if you give us 20 acres for our 20 acres, that would be good. That part of the discussion was put the bed at the very beginning. It has to be something that benefits our community as a whole, and, and, and it's not just a benefit to one company. So we started, go back to that last slide for a second, I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so uh, we've also started doing some other discussions as we've been talking about uh, what we're doing here around uh, City Hall, and we'll go to that in just a minute. So, again, we've talked about this exchange of land. Uh, what's being proposed is that they would acquire a 29-acre site. I think by now most people know the site. Some people refer to it as the Mars site. It's down at 435 in Wood End. Uh, like any site, it has its pros and cons. Uh, but it is a larger area. It does give us the ability to grow uh, and put more things in that park. Again, most of our park use is around uh, soccer and baseball, right? So it takes up lots of room. It needs parking because most people drive to those types of activities. Uh, the other part, as I said, we expect them to put a sizable amount of money there. Uh, I will tell you it's well in excess of a half a million dollars. Uh, so we can replace what's out there with even better stuff. Uh, I will also say uh, Old Dominion has never uh, received a tax abatement in our community and they're not asking for one as part of this. The only thing we may do is look at the sales tax exemption piece of it. But the, thus far, they have never required, never asked for or received a tax abatement to the improvements that they've already made. Yeah, okay, I was just, okay. you, were, you said, I just want to make sure that I heard right. that right. You said that they never have. They have not had a tax <coughs> yes. okay. So when they built the, the facility out there, completely done, 100% at, at, we didn't issue any type of IRBs or anything for that particular project. The discussions we've had thus far is if anything, we would use the IRB for tax exemption on the materials, uh, which quite honestly may benefit all the way around. So uh, just so, that, so that's out there. Uh, again, there's the site that we're talking about. I know some people say, well, why, why that site? Uh, obviously, it's flat, uh, which is good when you're trying to build baseball and so soccer type fields. Uh, it does have great <coughs> access in the sense that you can get to it from Wooded Road. Again, we expect mostly it's going to be a drive in, drive out. And quite honestly, the other thing is that's really one of the entry points to our community. And I think most would say it's not the best looking entry point that we have for our community today, right? It's been sitting vacant for a long time. Uh, it's got piles of dirt out there. It's, you know, it's an old industrial type of use. Uh, I think a lot of people remember it as the Judy Company. That was before my time. Uh, it was owned by Total Electric. It was owned by Mars Tree Services. But mainly it's set in that same state out there. So what are some of the pros and cons as we talked about? Uh, number one, it gives us more space so we can grow our park system that we don't have. Uh, we'll be able to put new amenities out there so I don't have to go put a new roof on, on a bathhouse. Uh, we can build a brand new one. We can look at how we use the gazebos and maybe instead of one large one, we might want to have smaller ones. So we can have improved uh, amenities. They're a great employer. I, I mean, I, I didn't realize they had as many employees they have. They have 325 employees that, that are served out of that facility, and they have a payroll in excess of $17 million a year. Uh, that would make it one of our larger employers in the city. I think FedEx probably has the largest number of employees uh, in the city. Uh, it eliminates the problem with the railroads, so if there is a problem. And quite honestly, having a railroad next to a park, while not unheard of, right? If you have small children and, and you have people playing soccer and <coughs> trying to watch your children, uh, it's a concern. Uh, it's a concern. Uh, 
Uh, and another thing we've got a lot of feedback during the park master plan is river access, right? How do we get trails? You know, uh, what, could we do something with the current uh, park where you can get into the river? Maybe is there a place down there to get off? Could we enhance fishing, right? And different things that we can do along the river. So we've got a lot of feedback in that park master study about river access. So this gives us another opportunity to look at that. Uh, you know, some of the comments we've heard was, well, this is in an industrial park. And I think you'll see here this may not be uncommon. It is in an industrial park, but it's also an entrance to our city. Uh, how do we handle what we're doing today? Right? We have baseball, soccer, go all year round. So we're going to address those things. Uh, like all of us, we, we get a personal attachment. That, that park, you know, probably many of y'all may have had children there. Uh, you may have played in that park <coughs> yourself. Uh, you remember when, you know, you broke your ankle or your arm playing baseball or whatever. And, and you know, we've had a lot of community engagement in the park. And we want to make sure that we address that. If, if this moves forward, we do something else. Uh, and then trail access. Again, one of the things we told Project Green early on is, you know, we have that trail there. We spent, uh, you know, with KDOT a good amount of money building the bridge across <coughs> there so we can have that access to the Phillips Freedom Trail. We need to make sure we continue to have access to the trail. And quite honestly, we get a lot of our businesses down there. They use that trail in that park, you know, that's where their employees go and walk and have lunch and things, and we want to encourage that. We don't want to discourage that. So, again, the, the industrial sector, if you think about it, and I'm sure many of y'all have been down there, soccer day, baseball day, everybody drives in, they have their games, they drive out. We don't get a large contingent of people that walk in there. There's no sidewalks, there's no access from, a, from, a, from that way now. Uh, we have people that walk the trail, they drive down there, so the issue about trying to have people ride bikes or do things like that through the industrial park really is already an issue today. Right? It, you already have truck traffic, and I, I can't imagine most people are going to try to cross from the north to the south. We know that's a challenge, but you're going to have a child or, or even an adult get on a bicycle, cross a five-lane highway and a railroad, and ride through an industrial setting to get to some park center. And so we don't expect this park to be the park where you have playground equipment, small children type thing, right? That, that really needs to be in the neighborhood settings in, in, in this area. Uh, you know, it really can become a place that really is almost an economic development opportunity in that we can have that sports complex type of thing out there, highly visible from the road. It, it, we know there's not enough soccer fields in the town, but soccer's a wrong thing. You know, baseball, do we start holding terms? Things that we just can't do today because we're limited in space and types of facilities out there. So, again, question about industrial, sports complexes and industrial parks. So, a late activity center, probably some of y'all have been down there, kind of it's down, I think, 169 Highway. Uh, you know, got Tyson Food, and Webco, and lots of manufacturers, and they have a, you know, a, a, a football field, soccer field, baseball fields of, of different size and ages, right off 159th Street and 169th. Right? And I'm sure y'all have seen it in lots of things. This is down in Wichita area, Wichita Falls area, off of 96 Highway. That all a complete soccer complex. Again. It is tucked into an industrial area. Again, why, why would you do this thing? Because the land's flat, right? When you start getting into hilly, treed areas, that's great for some parks. It's very difficult if you want to build sports fields. Uh, not that you can't do it, but you got to take all the trees down and you got to level the land and move a lot of dirt. It gets real expensive. A few other parks in our area uh, that you might look at or around the area. Again, you got the Olathe Soccer Complex that's off of. K10, you've got the Wendell <coughs> County Sports Association has a facility up there off of uh, 435 and Leavenworth Road, I believe it is. Uh, another one down in Emporia that you, if you're going down 35, uh, especially on the weekend, 
you'll see that facility with lots and lots of people, lots and lots of cars. So, you know, the hardest thing with parks are these types of facilities, building parking. And parking uses up lots of land, and obviously parking is somewhat expensive. You start thinking about it, you spend ten or fifteen thousand dollars on a parking place, and you build hundred parking places, you get into it, you know, pretty expensive. So uh, this is a concept, and I, and I want to make sure we understand this, right? We haven't retained anybody to go do design works for us. We don't have an architect, we've made no plans. But what we've asked is a few of our people that we work with, engineering and architecture firms, is to say, so what if, what if we had this piece of property? Can you give us a concept or concept? This particular one, as you can see, shows you come in off of wood end at the, at the top part up by the highway. You could have some buildings, one of those buildings. They could be city, they could be commercial, they could be a hotel, I mean, uh, they could be a daycare. I mean, they, they could be any number. A green area where it's basically it's an open area, come down to two basically full size soccer fields. You know, could that be one large one and two small ones? Sure. A four pipe baseball. So, again, that's just one concept of how that acre could be used. Uh, again, part of the purpose of the park study is this isn't the design parks, it's to find out what are the needs and wants and desires, both of our community and people that use it. Remember, we know most of the people that come into our parks may not be residents. You know, if they're playing in our soccer program, coming in our baseball program, they're participating, but a large percentage of them are coming from other places. They come from Bonner or Shawnee or, or Tonganoxie or Baser or Leavenworth. So, so we, you know, Turner. We, so we have a lot of people come in and use the parks from different places. So just a concept. <clears throat> Question about interruption of park programming. Obviously, we'll have to address that. But we have space where we could use fields. We can change the scheduling. Uh, it's a, it's a timing issue, and a lot of it are in if the project goes forward. When are they going to start? You know, so we can work with them over. Hey, we're we're about to have a seven week soccer uh, time in one week from now. Can we push back when we start turning dirt, or maybe you could be working on you know, other pieces of the project and not disturb this area at the front end. So, uh, again, Mike does a great job of working with our other recreation partners in the area on scheduling and how we put together teams. But we don't have enough kids playing in our program that are just able to get so, right? We, we may have a, a soccer, youth soccer team, but they may play in different places and they can play here. So, scheduling probably works the best for that and they're aware of it. The attachments, uh, obviously we have there in the flagpole, uh, Mayor Lindy Trent, uh, which you know, obviously a lot of people know. You know. One of the discussions as you come into the park, there will be some kind of a parking area, public parking area. So put the flagpole, relocate it, maintain, you know, upgrade it, make it better. Uh, you know, add more park benches, add more trail amenities, these kind of things can be added uh, throughout a trail system. The Parks and Rec Board is working you know, really hard to get more into understanding how parks can be part of our community because they really, <coughs> people are driven by parks. People want parks, they want that access, they want those trails. I mean, I'll have to say, I know Mr. Carpenter's back here in the back, and when we did uh, Edwardsville Drive, he was a strong advocate for putting the sidewalk on the road, and I'll have to say, I was like, yeah, that's more money and it's a pretty limited budget. <coughs> like, now you're gonna you're gonna go out there and prepare and grade the road, you ought to put a sidewalk on. And I must say there are people walking on that sidewalk every single day that I drive down there. So uh, I can't say I was the advocate really. Uh, Mr. Carpenter was kind of pushed for that. And, and it's right, people use our trails and our sidewalks everywhere we live. Every time we put them, you start seeing people there. And we certainly don't want them walking in the roads. Probably not children, people with strollers, etc. So, uh, trail access. Uh, again, uh, we have been very clear that we need to maintain a portion of that trail access. So, if you think about the park today, we would come in on Blake Street, there would be a small parking lot there, I say small 12, 16 vehicles, uh, the flagpole, or some kind of a trailhead entry that's already there. 
so you would go on the same trail. You wouldn't have the return part of the trail back around, so you would lose that part, but you still have access to the trail. <clears throat> and as you know, we're building more trails, so as part of the project we did with uh, Bastinol, we're adding 3,700 linear feet of trail, so three quarters of a mile of trail that's being added, again, as part of a corporate partner that helps us get through. The bridge, everything else about the, about the park stays there. Uh, we've talked about some type of a gazebo or small structure, probably down by where the bridge is at, something we've always wanted to have down there. So there's some, there's some just land down there that, that flat and, and would make for a nice, you know, six, eight person kind of gazebo structure. Uh, so that would really help us. And again, the new site would almost complete the ability to have a trail system to go from 435 to the mobile home community. And, right, and that's been a goal for some time. How can we build it? It would be nice to someday see a trail go as far into Kansas City, Kansas as possible, get all the way to you know K7 into downtown Bonner Springs. Obviously, there's a lot of partners in there, but it's possible. It is possible to do that, and this is one more piece of that, that puzzle. Other concerns, you know, we would relocate our playground equipment. We have nice playground equipment. It's fairly new. It's usable. Uh, we have what was done for the futsal court, so uh, we want to find a place for that. You know, you're going to lose some of that, right, the concrete asphalt, but we can reuse the fencing. We can reuse the goals. Uh, you know, we just need to find what the right place is, and the right place is you know, going to be determined more from the community. Who, who's using it? Where are they at? You know, what, what do they need? Uh, are they walking there or driving there? Those kind of things are probably inside that. <coughs> We've got the disc golf course and some of those other things. So we will keep working on it. So where are we at? Uh, I spoke with the general <coughs> council from, from Old Dominion uh, the other day. And basically, like any good development project, uh, and really on our behalf, they're evaluating the land, right? And we're making sure that the land doesn't have any restrictions on it, doesn't have some utility in the middle of it, doesn't have, you know, a buried containers, all those kind of things that we do. Generally, they're called a phase one environmental. Uh, they're doing some borings, right? Because not only the land they're looking at, but our land, you know, can they build on that? I mean, we've had it as a park for a long time, but that doesn't mean that it's, you know, that you will build on it. I mean, we want to, they want to make sure it's usable for them, too, because it's a sizable investment. I mean, we're talking several million dollars investment in something. The good thing is they have covered all the costs, right? They haven't asked us, and we made it very clear that for this thing to go forward, those types of pieces have to be covered by them, and they've paid all those costs up front. So there's no... You know, it's not coming to us saying, can you go do the environmental review? No, this is on you. You have to do the foundation pieces before we do that. Uh, I will tell you that they certainly are going to be have explored, uh, as any good business would. They, you know, they are out of room. They have to expand. Uh, this is their preferred option from everything I've heard from them. But if this doesn't work, then they're looking at other sites. And those sites may or may not be, they won't be in Edwardsville. Uh, they may or may not be in Wyandotte County. Again, they've been a good employer, I think, for those who were here when they opened. Uh, we went down there. I still got a picture of the old, old Dominion truck, the first truck they ran out or something. And they've been good partners. You know, they don't have problems. Uh, you know, they're a quality organization. And I think it would be to our benefit to keep them if possible with all the things So the other things that have been going on, which, again, most of these all started separately, but have kind of come together. Uh, we've also been having discussions, really as part of the downtown redevelopment, about this area that's just south of the fire station. There's a ball field there, uh, and then there's a lot of green space, and we use it for the festivals and things like that. And again, what we're hearing people say, how about river access? How about trail access? How about how about open areas, you know, come just throw a frisbee around? So we started talking with the, the property owners, RHP properties, about 
would they be open to some type of situation where the city would assume that property, whether it's ownership or leases or, or something, and they were very open to it. And, you know, partially is, that's an expense for them. They're maintaining it, right? Uh, but it's still private property. And so if we can make it an area that can be used publicly and the community can enjoy these assets. And, you know, we can add, there's already a playground structure out there. There's a little basketball court out there. So now maybe we can program it and use it. We can add, uh, maybe it's the disc golf course or, or a spray car or some of the other things that little people would like to have. Certainly, we need it for trail access. So that's there. Uh, again, uh, this map probably shows it. The other reason why it's not a great park property, most of it's in the either the floodway or floodplain, mainly the floodplain. So all that area in blue, you can't do it. So you can't put a habitable structure. And if you notice, there's a few mobile homes up on, the, on that edge up there that are already in the floodplain. And a couple of those, you'll notice, are probably vacant lots now because in order to replace those, they have to meet the new floodplain regulations. And in reality, it's probably not worthwhile, dollar and cents wise. So there's a lot of area down there that's in the floodplain. Great for park purposes, not so good for putting houses in. Uh, so there, there's pluses. So again, we've really just been in discussions. Uh, they've been in discussions with myself and with our partner KBS on the redevelopment. They've been very open to it. Obviously, uh, you know, there's parts to be discussed. We have transferred back and forth a draft of letter of intent uh, that would allow us to go do our due diligence. Probably the biggest issue down there is the existing yard that's there where they, you know, have their maintenance yard and they have some parking of RVs and trailers. You know, if you could pick it up and move it, that'd be great. The question is where you pick it up and move it to and, and what do you do? So if anything, from their standpoint, is they've got to have a place that their maintenance people can work from and their community likes having <coughs> access to a place to park uh, at RVs and boats and things like that. That's nearby, right? That will drive 10 miles to get picked up. It's an amenity to park. So we think we can work with that. The two are not connected, but they are connected in the sense that some of the concerns that we have with Project Green, saying well, where would we put our playground, or where would we put futsal, or where, this gives us an opportunity to look at that area, and I think it's about 15 acres, 13, 15 acres, 12. 12, okay, 12 <coughs> acres, so there, there's the plus there. Uh, riverfront Park, and that basically that area at the end of, of Ninth <coughs> and uh, Wood End Road, where the boat ramp is at now, uh, you know, what are we going to do with that? Again, it's, it's right now, uh, you know, we pretty much just the boat ramp. There's not much else there. There certainly could be things there. Uh, it could become more of a neighborhood park setting, obviously. We potentially have a playground and a place to put a playground, so is that a possibility? So all of these, again, are working independently, but they're possible. And I know this is, I don't know why it didn't work out well but the assumption here, just one again assumption, you could have a playground area, kind of the purple area. You could again have bathroom, real bathroom <coughs> facilities, so we can get rid of the porta potties and those kind of things. We have a sewer line real close, right back to the middle of it. Uh, you know, and in this sample, we put a dog park. You know, is that the right use there? Don't know. Is it something that we're hearing a lot of people say, man, we'd love to have a dog park? Now, I say this about dog parks and all the other dogs. They're not that easy, right? Going out putting up some fence and calling it a dog park is not how it works. So uh, don't think that's a cheap alternative because I'm not. Now, certainly, if I'm building a dog park or a community center, that dog park is going to be pretty cheap. But in reality, they take a lot of work. They take maintenance, right? And again, you can't just go throw up some fence and say, throw the dogs in there and got a dog park there. Or you won't have problems. But again, an option. Another way to continue the trail, which we already have, maybe tie it into the community so that there's access there. We can look at that. Really, this last part, I should probably give it to, to Zach, but I'll try to cover it. But, uh, you know, as you know, it's probably been four months, three or four months, we've been working on this. Uh, yeah, four or five months. Uh, on, on 
the master plan for parks. Uh, Councilmember Striver has been a council liaison to that, has been active with that. Uh, they, you know, they're hearing the same things. They're going to be coming also uh, before you probably at your November meeting, I think, when you said October, I think it's going to be November. A lot of community input, uh, and we're trying to take that community input and see how it fits into the, to these other parcels, parcels and, and plans. So, again, just maybe summary. You know, today we have about 33 acres of parks that the Project Green goes through. And again, I want to make it very clear. There's no guarantee it's even going to happen. We're, we're definitely, there's nothing in paper saying, come sign an agreement. You know, there's a ways to go. But we can, you know, grow to 54 acres of space. Uh, you know, we can develop our riverfront park. Uh, you know, some of these things are in about, you know, trails or, you know, Done a good job and get expanded. You know, on the other side, we upgrade our facilities that are new. Most of our, you know, again, everybody been to the park knows that a lot of those facilities need upgrading. They're just age. We spend money in fixing them up, or potentially you get some of those replaced as part of the agreement. I don't want to suggest, however, that the city will have no dollars in any park. That's not going to happen. We'll have to make an investment in our parks. We should make an investment. This is an option to maybe stretch the dollar to be invested in some parks to get even more park at the end of the day. So, with that, I will, I think that's all we have, isn't it? Uh, I will sit down if there's people from the public that want to comment, then we can take those. And then we're happy at the end of that if there's responses, questions, we'll try to answer. Thank you. Thank you, man. If there is anyone in the audience who wishes to make any comments or ask questions, now is an opportunity for you to do so. You would need to come to the podium, state your name and address, and you will have three minutes. Three minutes? <laughs> okay, my name is Pamela Samick. I live at 10628 Shawnee Road here in Edwardsville. My husband was Sam Samick. There's a, a sign down at the park that says Sam Samick Soccer Field. He coached soccer for a lot of years. I'm sorry if I get emotional. That sign means a lot to me. The park means a lot to me. And I guess I don't care if you move the darn park, but you better not get rid of his sign. <laughs> uh, he had to get the first part of that walking thing in the park. He worked hard on that. He was, a, he was on the Parks and Rec Board. He was a big part of this community for a lot of years. And I just don't want his memory to go without something being left. And then there was a lot of discussion on Facebook about people upset about moving the park. Now, I obviously don't see a lot of them here tonight, but they were very upset with the thought of moving a park. And I, I understand what he said, you know, it's, it'll be good for the city, it'll be good, it'll be good, it'll be good but it's going to upset a lot of citizens here. And I think that should be taken into account. You know, you're elected by us. We have a say-so in what goes on in this community, and I think we should have a say-so in this too. One of the families whose that park bench is for their son, she thought the meeting was later this week, but she said to make sure she, that I point out that for their family, they would not be happy to move the bench. Now, me personally, you can move the sign I just don't want his memory to go unnoticed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any others? <clears throat> Do I get three more minutes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave Stride, uh, 1396 South, 104th Street. Um, I, to be honest, when I saw Mr. Webb's presentation and what they would do with the, the new area, I kind of groaned to myself and said, like, oh, you know, I mean, the, when when, uh, when they did the initial survey and they were saying, hey, get on, you know, go to this, I think it was a website, and fill out the survey, tell us what you want to park. I remember I said out loud to my wife, I said, well, it's not like they're going to pick it up and move it, right? So I didn't even bother because I thought, well, what's the point? I mean, and, and 
the, the, the current park that we have does have a lot that that is uh, lacking in, in, in uh, amenities. And having little kids, when they would play soccer on that far field, if they had a practice, and one said, Dad, yeah, i got to go to the bathroom, it's like, oh, not that quarter potty. And things like 800 feet away, you know. And, and um, it's it just, uh, any time it rained, the place turned into a slob, you know. I mean, it, there's just, uh, and then the other, you know, the, and, and like somebody commented about people walking to the park, and I thought the only people that walk to that park are the nursing home people. And I've never actually seen them make it. I think they get to the entrance and they get tired and they turn around and go back. You know, they're like, you know, forget this. But uh, so, you know, moving it to where that other location, I thought, ah, oh, this, is, this isn't any better, right? But uh, I did like Mr. Webb's vision of, of the other, because seeing what they could do there and then seeing what else could be done elsewhere, I, I thought, because, you know, I thought, the, the park where it is is not in an easy place where somebody can just hop out the door and walk across the street to the park. So, so I do. I, you know, after seeing the rest of it, I thought, wow, okay, now I'm excited again because initially I just thought a bunch of baseball fields. Nobody says, hey, honey, let's go have a picnic on the baseball field, right? I mean, I might be trying to get to third base, but that's not <laughs> their way. Um, the uh, so yeah, I do like I do like the whole vision, and, and obviously some people have some legitimate attachments to what is there, and I think we got to do what we can to honor them and, and honor their loved ones or amplify it, right? Uh, I think on Facebook I suggested, hey, maybe instead of the San Jose soccer field, we have the San Jose soccer complex. Yeah. And, and instead of Lucian's <laughs> instead of Lucian's bench, we have a Lu Lucian's playground or, or you know kitty corner or something you know, like that. Um, I don't know, futsal, I think you can just leave it. <laughs> that's, that's my opinion. I, I, I appreciate the vision. And, uh, and I think if it's planned and done right, I think it could be something awesome. I think if it's done wrong, it could be seedy and, you know, uh, uh, you know across from a truck, truck stop and 435 and all that, you know, that could be a real seedy area. I, I could see it though. But the river is exciting too. I mean, uh, my, my boys and I, one of the best memories we had was when we popped in a kayak around Medora. We floated, I think it was 17 miles. We camped overnight on a sandbar. It was awesome, and it was so much fun. And we get off on Edwardsville. It was, uh, it was great. So anyways, uh, I, I, I trust your vision. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Mayor, Council, uh, Greg Kendall. 727 Minnesota Avenue, PCK. Michael alluded to uh, our role with the Wyandotte Economic Development Council being a part of Project Green. Thought it might be worthwhile to at least give you some perspective from um, our end of it. Um, mostly what I wanted to say is some appreciation because, um, as you know, we've seen significant growth in Edwardsville in that industrial park. It's largely built out. There's just a couple more spots. So when this company approached us about their dilemma about wanting to stay in Edwardsville but not being able to find locations. Their request initially was to look other places. Um, but after much consideration and a lot of discussion back and forth with Michael and the team, we sort of looking at some of these other options about what if we could keep the company and grow them here because they've been very happy here. They've been a very open um, with just about everybody. And we don't see this all that often where you have companies who um, have come into this just like you and I would sit down across lunch and, and have a conversation. Um, they very much like being in Edwardsville. They want to sit. They've not asked us. We're incentives first. Um, the question was, how can we make an expansion? And it just happened to be um, kind of a fluke conversation that we said, hey, you know, we've been talking about how to improve the parks. And we've been very supportive of, of the park sales tax. Um, and how do we create more community spaces? How do we create more family spaces? Our family uses the other <coughs> park as well. And unfortunately, my children always like to be on the other side of the fence with railroad tracks. And so it was, I would say that's probably my biggest complaint. Um, but the one thing that we love about that park is that I can send our kids to the concession stand with a five or $10 bill and they can actually get money back. And when you go to some of these big sports complexes, you ain't gonna send them with 20s and you don't really <laughs> wanna send them. Um, by themselves, and one of the things that we love about the Edwardsville Parks program is that our kids can be kids, and we can let them kind of run free. But there are some challenges that have already been noted about our existing park, 
and it's got a lot of constraints, a lot of challenges with parking, water, I mean, there's a lot of challenges. So when we started talking about what if, um, what we have is a company that is essentially standing in front of you all saying, look, we'd like to stay, we don't want to go. If we do relocate, we essentially have to relocate the entire operation because it makes sense to leave a portion of it. Keep in mind, it will still be on the tax rolls. Somebody else will come in and take that facility. They're not giving us an alternative. That's what's very different about this project, is that they've never approached this as, you know, we, if you all don't do this, then we're leaving. That is sort of their very last on the list. It is very much a community discussion about how do they engage, how do they buy a bigger piece of land that could potentially provide access to the river, uh, whether they include food trucks or retail or other opportunities to, to grow um, our economy. We've been very open with, we want to trade basically land where you all get more land than, than they, you have today for park. Um, it's not a perfect situation yet, but with enough sidewalks, with trails, with uh, thoughtful uh, discussions around the park's master plan, um, I think you have a unique opportunity to have a win-win and to um, put together something pretty creative. But first and foremost, um, I think there's some appreciation and congratulations for having a discussion and being a community that you can actually have um, this kind of opportunity when so often the projects that we're faced with are our ultimatums, it's all about the dollars and cents, and the company doesn't have a best interest either. And so um, I think this has been a very different, um, all, all, of course, all of the projects that we work in Edwardsville are similar in this way, in that they enjoy working with you all, they enjoy working with your team, um, and it makes it really, really easy. My only frustration is we just don't have another part to develop. But that, that's my two cents for it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any others? Not, uh, I'm going to make a comment about Sammy. Obviously, you know that I knew him quite well. I didn't know him really well, but we were a good friend. Yeah. And it was a pleasure when I made the sign for him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, Mayor, uh, you know, just in summary, I, I mean, I think, you know, as I alluded to, you know, his comments on Facebook and other places, and I, I think uh, Zach did a great job of trying to keep people in that loop, and I and I think it has helped in the discussion. And we, we we do understand how do how do we honor those that have been part of the park as it is. And I think we absolutely can and will do that. Uh, again, I, I think we have a you know. I, I was close to Phyllis. You know, we worked together for many years. That was something I said. You know. Here we have a trail. We need to build trails anywhere. But how do we connect at least some part of that trail? How, how do we, you know, recognize her and recognize, quite honestly, the tragedy that cancer brings to our community and across the country? And we were able to do that. And, and our family was involved. And so I have no doubt we'll be able to do the same things for those who have been engaged in, in this park. And, and that's, you know, it's a place of peace and remembrance from absolutely, I think, no doubt we can't be committed to them. Well, thank you for the for the work and, and the presentation. And I think we'll keep you up to date. I don't I don't know when the next uh, next action may be necessary. So. Mayor, we're going to be able to uh, make some comments. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to go back to what the lady said about um, her husband. You know, I I I understand that and I get it. Uh, my sergeant at the police department when I was with KCKPD got killed in uh, 98 and uh, just north of the state avenue, Sergeant Rick Aston. And whenever, um, whenever that area got developed, it was real hard to think about that going away and I sure hope that we did something and we ended up, and I'll say it now, but I, I grabbed one of those signs really quick so that I knew that there would be one and they didn't disappear when we end up making that road back into that Sergeant Aston Parkway, which is important. So um, I will assure you that I'll do everything that I can to make sure that that, uh, <coughs> that, that continues with your memory of your husband also. Um, so I think it's important. It's disappointing that there's not more people here on such a, they all want to get on there and chirp, chirp, chirp on Facebook but don't want to come down here and talk about it. The totality of all this 
you know, going on is very important. I think that people initially thought that it was going to be, well, the park all gets moved down to 435 and went in, and there's no, there's, now our kids don't have anywhere to go play. What are we going to do now? And now you sit here tonight and you go, yeah, that's really not what we're talking about. We're, we're talking about a sports complex with the potential of a still having a city park within the inner part of our city for kids to go play at. And I think it's real important for people to realize that that's what we're talking about. When I hear it and I look at the presentation, I think of um, uh, Parkville. When you look on the other side, you see the, the walking trail that in Parkville. It's right along the river. They have the dog park. And you go there on any Saturday, and there's hundreds of people walking up and down that. And they're right there close to uh, some restaurants, some uh, entertainment type things. I know it's industrial but uh, area, but I, one of the things that I was really, uh, if I remember right, and I can go back in my, this is my black book, not that kind of black book, but that's my black book that I keep a lot of council notes in. But we had a uh, study that was done that talked about how many people come into our city and come to work and then they leave. And I think with the child care portion of, of people that are coming into our city, that, that could be something. I kind of thought about that at first. I thought, child care? But, you know, if you think about 4,000 people uh, coming into our city that are working, maybe, maybe that single parent or, uh, you know, uh, hours that don't work out with their spouse, maybe that works out. So I'm glad that we're thinking outside that box on those kinds of things. Um, I'm all for it. I think the connectability is going to be real important, that we make sure that we can get down there and, and do some things. Um, I've spent some time down there recently uh, in that area, and I will tell you that the truck traffic coming in and out of that gas station, if you guys want to see something, go there at 7 in the morning and try to turn left out of that gas station. It, you'll sit there for quite some time. There's a lot of traffic that goes through there. So I don't know if we start maybe in this, we start thinking about a traffic study for uh, some lights, signalization, something along that. So that's important. I'm all for it. I think we can do it. And this council has the vision to do it and do it right, like I think was mentioned. As long as we do it right, I think it's something that, that we can be proud of. Vision right off 435, people see the I'm just going to say Edwardsville Sports Complex, right there. It's right up there. Good view. People see it. I think it, it's a good location. I agree with everything Councilman Stites has said. And That's the first. Uh, yeah, yeah, mark, mark that down. Uh, but also, uh, there is a very similar complex at what's it, 80 something and Highway 7. The 3 2 Park on yeah. out west. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. one of the entrances into it, you do drive through an industrial park, and there happens to be two fast food restaurants right there. That, so that is a, that's a, it's really a good example of what we could have. Just throw a hotel in there and some other things. It would be very similar to what we have on the other side. The other entrance goes right along the industrial park on one side, and, and the complex is to the north. So I think the model is very good. We don't have to look very far to see the model and how it can work. And just, just to put a pin on Councilmember Stites' comments, we'll put this presentation out now that the council's had a chance to see it, and so people can kind of get a more fuller picture of some of the different plans mm -hmm. that we've got yeah. in action, so they can maybe digest it all and you know actually see the vision rather than you know being myopic and focusing just on the industrial park aspect of it. Um, and also, I mean, I, I do wish we had more people here to, to give some comments on this presentation, but as part of the parks plan, we have collected pretty considerable public comment and engagement through that. So, you know, whether either of these two projects move forward or not, whatever the next step is in the parks program, parks and recreation program, is going to be informed by that citizen input. So I, just, I don't want that to get lost in all of it. I'd like to comment that both of the sites I'm in total agreement with well, for both of the chucks. Chuck, yeah, he's not part of it. Well, <laughs> I've got bronchitis. I apologize for cousins again. <laughs> or, or got bad wing. But anyway, I do I I picked watermelons on that property. And I do remember working with Sam on the soccer fields, the walking drills and all that. I, I go back that far that I remember all that. And there would be no way that I think that we would 
dishonor the name by not naming or <coughs> taking the name along with the facilities. Because there was a lot of people involved in that. Sam was one of the big ones from the ground floor on that. So I agree 100%. I had reservations from the beginning, but the more the city staff's been working on that, we've been discussing that. I'm pretty much turning the tide where I'm, I'm in favor of it. I just want to make sure that you understood where I stand on that. Can I ask a question? Well, I'm going to I'm going to break with it unless you do that. <laughs> I mean, I guess I was a little concerned when the, all the hubbub showed up on Facebook, where everybody said the city's are this is a done deal. The city's already sold it to Old Dominion. <laughs> We're just now hearing about it, and it's like I don't know where all that came from, but that did cause a lot of Facebook. uproar. Yeah, yeah. the Facebook. social media Fake news. Made, made it Fake an uproar news. and made me very defensive and a lot of other people. But you know, having seen this and understand, you know, I spent a lot of hours down in that park. It wasn't my favorite place to go on the weekend, but I had to be there. <laughs> for baseball and soccer, and I'm sorry to see it go, but if we can make it a better place, something that represents Edwardsville a little better, I'm all for it. I, I appreciate your comment. I really do. And I would like to see, whether the, the Old Dominion deal goes through or not, just continuing uh, moving forward with our downtown area um, and, and revitalizing that to make sure that a good place for our community who can walk in, uh, whether it's, it's business people, but primarily the people who live here and are raising their families here to have a place to, um, that they can bring their kids, that they can even walk to and ride their bikes to. Um, that we just keep moving, moving forward with those two other, the riverfront and then potentially downtown, whether this goes through or not. Yeah, I think that's, we can, that, that is definitely the, the path forward for that because that is, as it's been conceptualized, this area in and around the community center, that is a place-making effort. I mean, it is an economic development tool. Businesses want to go to a place where it is inviting around them and their employees have some place to bring their families to. And, it, and like, like Mike mentioned, you can't put a building on, the, on that land, so it's right for parking. Also. So we're going to pursue that irrespective of of the project right here. I think one of the things, and we talked about this in the parks meeting that night, is, is parks and development, whether residential, commercial, whatever kind of development, really go hand in hand. They should go hand in hand. It's a quality of life for them. So, for example, as we've been talking about redevelopment, one of, one of the companies we've been working with, uh, her, her family, they do a lot of bicycle type bench races, right? And what she finds is she goes to these communities and then, you know, it's Saturday or Sunday, and then they say, oh, you should be here on Monday, we've got a great ice cream store, right? Or we've got this thing. But but they're not tying their recreational opportunities to the physical side. You know, that's really the foundation. I mean, if you go to cities across the world, you know, I mean, right? It's, it's that small business, that interaction, it's that community place. That's what, that's really what people want to participate in. I mean, you know, build a building is not a challenge. Right? Pick a building, build it, that, that, right? That's not part of it. It's how do we connect these things together. And from a community value standpoint, I know I've used this, you know, right? The most expensive or highest value land in America is next to city. Central Park could be full of buildings, but they essentially said, no, we're not going to do that. And now where do people, where do people want to get right? And you pick parks anywhere. People go, I want to drive by the park. Right? I want to have access to the park. I want to have access to the trains. I, you know, I want to be able to you know, walk and ride my bikes and do those things. You don't get too many people say, I hope I'm really close to a parking lot. Or <laughs> if I could just be next to that next you know, distribution, that's not where they want to live. You know, they, they want to have that access to those amenities. And I, again, I, I think that's what we're talking about here. This is one piece, but how we, how we continue to combine those will make the community as a whole a place more important than we want to be a part of. That's what we're talking about. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Zach and, and Zach and the Parks Group and, and WSU, they, they, they've done a lot of this. Greg has been. Great, uh, you know, again, uh, 
uh, th this didn't start off this way. Yeah. And, and to the point earlier, nobody's made any decisions either, right? It, it, it is a big it, it has lots of moving parts. And so it will take more discussion. All right, we're at the point where we need a motion to go into recess for executive session. <coughs> and I discussed earlier with Mike, somewhere around 45 minutes, so we're looking at, at 8.45. What? So I got 8.45 initially. Okay. No, that's, that's 30. 30 but you want to do more? I, I, Tyler and... Tyler, what do you think? I think we start with 35 minutes. That's okay, fine. 35. So, so 8, uh, 8.45. Move that the City Council recess in the Executive Session pursuant to KSA 7543 b 2 for consultation with legal counsel regarding the information would be deemed a privilege in an attorney-client relationship related to the Village South at Edwardsville Project with the open meeting to resume in the City Council Chambers at 845. Second. We have a motion and a second to go into the Executive Session until 845. Would the clerk please call roll? Sharp? Yes. Stites? Yes. Adams? Yes. Ahar? Yes. Yes.
September 27th, we had a tragedy at my house. And I wanted to commend the departments on the secure professionalism of all the responders. Oh, is this, is that Sergeant Johnson? Yes, ma'am. I have nothing. I can't talk anybody. <laughs> just raise your hand. Nothing. I know everybody's gone just really quick. Wanted to thank the 4-H group for coming out. I know uh, <coughs> there was a lot of work I wasn't able to make it to this one. I wasn't really sure if it was a public thing or not. So I, I didn't. But uh, but that was, sounded like a great turnout. You probably know a lot more about it. But, um, it was a good turnout, and, and it, it was fun to watch the kids do, and I think they gained a tremendous amount from it, from a, a respect for uh, those who have gone before us, plus the historical significance of the site and so forth. I think, so I think there was a great lesson for them. Um, Zach, Wayne and I have talked, and we think it's very premature to have a dedication. Okay and would like to, to postpone that until probably sometime next year. And, and nothing has been scheduled that was kind of and The reason is we, we want to show the greatest respect to the families of those that have uh, people, family members interred there. And uh, there's some things we'd like to do, like get some of the uh, soldiers new tombstones and some things like that that we would uh, but it, you know, we stood at the top of the hill and looked at it and said, you know what, it's just not yeah, they have not worked. There's a lot of work that needs done. One of them is uh, those large trees that were cut down, and they're cut into like five-foot sections. There's no way humans, at least not less than ten of them, can lift those logs. So if there's some way we could get uh, you know, a, uh, some equipment up there, because they're going to have to pull them very carefully because they're right in between a couple of grave markers. And and pulled out of the way so that they can be put on the mechanism to pick them up and move them out of the area. It really needs to be done. And, you know, there's just we want to present it very well to the families and the people mm -hmm. involved. But we always couch that this was the first step, not the you know, first. No, no, it's it's just we want to show more respect. Mayor, I would just ask, I didn't think about public work, so both the crack seal and the other street uh, repair bids, and both, everything is done contractually, and those should both be starting this week next, uh, with weather. And on the quiet zone project, just so you know, we're, we, that's still moving forward. Uh, we're probably looking at the public improvement side of that. Uh, well, really the whole project, probably bidding maybe in November, since the UG handles that piece, uh, bids accepted in December and probably try to start work on that, uh, probably February, March, but not sure where the start point, you know, they're going to go down and do the other crossings and then come to 4th Street or do 4th Street or <coughs> start going in and work their way down, some of that stuff can't be, I, I know there's been some questions about, about that project too. Riverview is closed, east of 110. West on the sign, west. Oh, west, west, east, west, 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 but they ran fiber, but it's a private fiber company, so they're probably connected. There's fiber on the highway. I did purely guess up on Interstate 70, there's, there's you know, firm, 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 and probably trying to get it south to the industrial area or to K32, because there's fiber there. I don't know. But what they've done on 100 Street, I don't know. It's news to me. Cut through the cable wire. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they must have been. We were without internet for a day at that time. So they didn't tell it.
Okay, that is all. Um, the only thing I have to add is appreciate the, the, the park presentation. I think that's been very beneficial. And I, and I really like the, the plan to maybe try to expand with the property here and then even on the, uh, the boat ramp park to, to expand down there. That's really a good project to look forward to. Uh, this last weekend, or today, I was uh, elected to be the president of LKM, so I will be serving as the president in the coming year. It's been a good honor. Congratulations. Okay. With that, we are adjourned.